here when we were founded, is here today, and will be here for how many tomorrows? The issue is race. By way of introduction, our panelists are Alan Keyes, the Republican candidate for the United States Senate in Maryland. Richard Nathan, head of the Rockefeller Institute of Government at SUNY Albany. Rap musician and activist, Sister Soldier. Author, educator, Jonathan Kozol. Performance artist and playwright, Anna DeVere Smith. Boston University President, John Silber. Mayor Sharon Pratt Kelly of Washington, D.C., and Daruba bin Wahad, an activist and former Black Panther. Thank you all for joining us. Activists of the 50s and 60s cannot be called cynical for asking, we have overcome what? And there are not a few people out there now saying it's worse now than it ever has been. We have more divisions today than ever before. May I ask you to begin our program, President John Silver. Yes, to say things have not changed is to distort the facts beyond recognition. Things have changed immeasurably. Uh, there are many improvements that we should not overlook despite the fact that much remains to be done. We should remember uh, that in 1965, you didn't even have blacks able to attend restaurants in most cities. They couldn't even use the bathroom or the toilet uh, in a, a U.S. highway. Uh, these, these conditions, at least, have been overcome. One thing we do have to recognize, however, is that the corrective measures that should have been taken in the middle 60s to help and support black families were not done. The provision of preschool education, Head Start opportunities for black children and for poor children generally uh, was not done in any substantial way. Uh, President Silver, you sit next to the first uh, black woman to uh, ascend to the office of mayor of a major industrial city. I speak of the District of Columbia, Mayor Sharon Pratt Kelly. To which uh, uh, comments you would respond how, Mayor Kelly? Well, I guess I'd have to respond two ways. I'd say that we as African Americans have achieved against incredible odds to the extent that uh, we didn't even get the first window of opportunity to have access to the American dream until the 1960s and that now we have one among us who's the governor of Virginia, one among us who's chairman of the Democratic Party, uh, several among us who are now mayors of major cities, thousands among us who occupy a major political office, but yet in 1992, the issue of race is just as real, just as divisive, just as formidable as it was when we arrived in 1619. What we've achieved has been against the odds, not because America is at peace with us. On the occasion of, being, of having a comment of hers criticized, by Governor Bill Clinton. Sister Soldier, a raptivist, a, a musical artist, and uh, also a political activist, found herself on the cover of Newsweek magazine. Sister Soldier, what, what are your thoughts as you listen in on, this, on these opening comments? Alan Keyes spoke at the, at the Republican convention this year. You are a candidate, sir, for the United States Senate from Maryland, where you oppose incumbent uh, Democratic Senator uh, Barbara Mikulski, who, yes, was invited to appear on our panel and declined. Increasing numbers of black uh, Americans, including you, uh, Dr. Keyes, have stood to say that too many minority people in this country have internalized the process of the dole, of the handout. Woe is me, I'm black and therefore I can do nothing. I received a terrible education in a racist society. Where is my handout? Is that a fair characterization of your 
feeling about what has happened to the spirit and the soul of some minority people in this country. Well, I would say what has happened, because it's not like lightning striking from above. Evolved. I would have to say what, what has been done. You know, this was done. You, you, you had programs where you wrote the rules and regulations in such a way as to discourage work, to break up families, uh, to actually penalize people who were trying to, to help themselves. So, so don't tell me that this suddenly happened to folks. It was done to folks. Uh, and now we're going to have to make some active efforts to undo it. And I'm not uh, one of those folks who's going to say there was a big conspiracy uh, to destroy people. But it does seem to me that you couldn't have thought of a better conspiracy to destroy black leadership, the black community, black institutions, uh, than, than what, what posed as this uh, effort in the bureaucratic uh, welfare state to help people. And so I think we need to think it through, try to undo its damage, which is going to take uh, conscious use of the same power that helped to produce that damage, uh, and then concentrate on allowing people to have the power uh, to shape their own destiny. Daruba bin Wahad, you served 19 years uh, for uh, attempted murder of two policemen, a judgment that was overturned more recently on the basis of uh, an unfair trial and the withholding of information. Let me ask you, uh, Daruba bin Wahad, how you feel as you, what jumped out at you on that piece? When we look at these young men um, on the screen here, one of the young brothers said, you know, what do you know how to do? He said, rob, steal, and kill. What did Columbus know how to do when he came here? Rob the native people of their land, kill them, and exploit them? What did they know how to do? What is in the best tradition of capitalism in this society? Burning, loot, rape, and pillage. This is something that is as integral to the United States as breathing. And the problem with race in this country is that white people in this country do not want to confront their own history and live up to the consequences of that history. And when you don't confront the truth, the truth will ultimately destroy you. Does, uh, does Mr. Wahad make you squirm at all, Richard Nathan, director of the Nelson Rockefeller Institute of Government of the State University of Albany uh, of New York? You were an original member of the Kerner Commission. How do you respond to the uh, angry observations of well, Mr. Bin Wahad? Actually, I was the research director of the commission. And looking back, it's now 25 years. Uh, I think there's good news and there's bad news. We've talked a little bit about the good news. The bad news, and I agree with Mr. Wahad, is that in the inner cities, what he's talking about is deepening violence. The inner city conditions, I think, are worsening. But the flip side of that is that there are new neighborhoods, middle class, black neighborhoods in lots of cities that are fighting hard to stave off the effects of inner city problems and violence. And there's a large increase in lots of big cities, in suburban uh, African-American neighborhoods that are actually in many cases quite well off. Part of the bad news agenda that uh, worries me is that the mood is, is worsening. There's, there's a backlash, there's a deeper feeling about racism in the black community, and there's a hardening attitude, I think, in the white community. So it's a worrisome time, I grant you that. Yeah, but you know think that he just did exactly what Daruba brought up, which is that when we deal with the issue of white racism, white people don't deal with the fact that they are the ones who are sicker than anybody else in this particular issue, which is why when you deal with the question of race, you cannot deal with what's wrong with these African people. See, the thing that happened in South Central started with a malady in the justice system where white people could not see white men who had did something against black men and penalize them for what everybody in this country knows that they did. So the problem of white racism is that we don't look in depth and do these little documentaries on white people and what's wrong with them. <laughs> I'd like to add to that, the professor, um, um, uh, the president, uh, John Silver, said that um, one of the problems with the programs of the 60s was that they did not provide corrective measures to help the black family. We need to understand that when black people were brought here to the United States, they were brought here as an act of war. They were kidnapped here, and the destruction of the black family and the creation of a slave mentality was an integral part of the development of this nation state. So there has never been an interest in the black family, and that's reflected today. But even more, every city in which we have 
aspire to so-called political power. In, 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 in Newark, black males are being murdered by the, New York, by the Newark Police Department under the guise they're robbing cars. When we look at, at, at New York City, the police riot in the street.